So this is the way it started, and what I'm going to do this morning is I'm going to make the most incredible vanilla ice cream that you've ever had. And uh, in the industry, what I'm going to make is called custard. Um, a lot of confusion about custard. Uh, a lot of people on the East Coast won't buy it because they think it's what mom used to make and put into these little uh, glass ramekins <laughs> and put in the refrigerator. Well, uh, custard or frozen custard uh, is actually a 10 or 12 percent uh, butterfat vanilla ice cream with a specific amount of egg yolk added to it. Uh, I think it's 3.2 percent uh, egg yolk by volume, whatever that means. Uh, but it's a federal law what defines custard. It's also a low air content product, and it, it's fabulous. It's the best stuff uh, vanilla you'll ever taste. Uh, up until what we're doing today, making custard was uh, difficult because the dairies don't carry it. Uh, it's too difficult. Uh, I talk to dairymen all the time, and they say it's just too difficult working with egg yolks. We have too much problem uh, with uh, bird, bird flu, and, and all sorts of other things. So uh, we're going to use a product from a company that makes great flavors called iRice Company. They're out of Philadelphia. And uh, this they call Bavarian Base. Well, you read the ingredients, and the very first, you know, ingredients are listed by what's the most of in the can. The first ingredient in this can is egg yolks, pasteurized egg yolks. So we're going to add that to a regular vanilla mix. We're going to make it the way Jeff does with a high concentration of vanilla, and it's going to be fantastic. I have a lot of people asking, um, would I please do a video showing how to you know, put the whole machine together and run it? So I'm going to use the CB350. This is the largest selling machine in the world, and uh, it's the largest selling machine in the world because it'll do everything my bigger machines will do. Uh, it's built Emory Thompson quality. It's going to last decades instead of you know, eight years like everything else on the market. This is going to be you know, running for you know, 25, 30, 40 plus years. Uh, it's a very simple machine and it's priced very affordable. You can go to my website and we do something else unique. We publish our prices. We tell you exactly what it costs. I figure, how can you go buy a car? How can you walk onto a car dealership and say, gee, I'd like to get a Bentley. Well, you can't buy a Bentley unless you know what it costs. And then you might say, well, you know, maybe next year. Uh, so we put our prices right up there so you know up front what it's going to cost. Uh, this is currently at $10,400. Um, and the last time the, I had, had priced it out, it stayed for three years without changing the price. I try to keep the price down uh, because this is what people use to get into business. What happens is uh, you used to be able to go into a bank. 15 years ago, 10 years ago, you could walk into a bank and say, I want to open an ice cream parlor. I need $100,000. And the bank would say, great, would you like a house with that? You know, or anything else you want. Then the uh, Dodd-Frank law came along and they scrutinized banks so much. And I was watching Fox Business the other day and they were, there was a banker lamenting. He said, you know, if someone comes in and needs a $30,000 loan, we turn them down. We don't even ask them what it's about. We just turn them down. Not because we're mean, evil per people. Uh, always be nice to your bankers. You're going to need them someday. Uh, we're not mean, evil people. It's just the paperwork involved with the federal government to do a $30,000 loan doesn't make the loan profitable. So I looked at that problem and I said, I need to take my bigger machines with all the features and everything that it does and put it out in a less expensive package so that people can get into business. Uh, I want you to get into the frozen dessert business spending as little money as possible. Uh, because you need cash. Uh, please don't buy anything on credit cards if you can help it because you'll never pay it off. Uh, you, you pay cash up front for all the equipment you're going to need. You buy your ingredients. But the, the, the secret, the dirty little secret is um, all your suppliers, uh, if, if you were buying bulk sugar or you were buying bulk uh, strawberries, no one's going to give you credit for the first uh, year. They, they're going to treat you like a restaurant. and eh, they'll never make it. Well, our success rate, Jeff, is somewhere around 96% uh, of people that you and I have put, people, put into business. Yeah. It's, it's incredibly high. It's, it's, it's an abnormality. Using those rules. Yeah, of pay cash. So you start off small. You might end up, you know, in the first year, you might end up working this thing 18 hours a day. The machine will take it, but your spouse is going to say, honey, please come home. I, the kids haven't seen you in a month. And so 
my feeling is if you get up to the point where you're running any piece of equipment, I don't care what it is, if it's an earth mover uh, or a charter boat, if you're working 18 hours a day, you're making money. There's just no way you can't be making money if you're working that many hours. So three years from now, call us up and you say, oh, I'm working so hard, I'm so successful, I can't stand it. Um, I, I need to buy uh, a 24 quart, 12 or 24, and we'll get into that later. And at that point, the 24 at twice the cost, more than twice the cost, uh, is going to be a no-brainer for you because you are making so much money and now you say, you know what, I only have a, Donald Trump, Steve Thompson and I have one thing in common. We all only have a 24-hour day and I need to use it as best I can. So instead of spending 18 hours here, I'm going to cut it down to four hours every other day, and now it frees me up to do other things. And I tell people, I think I told about four different uh, people yesterday, I said, don't sell this off. Because here's what happens. You get your 24, you get it running, you say, this is wonderful. I can actually see that the sun does rise and sets, and there is such a thing as daylight. Uh, and you put this on the market, you'll never find them on the market. Uh, but you put it on the market and you sell it, and the very next day your best friend walks in and says, Steve, I just found you a location. It's 500 square feet and it's 20 miles away. It's perfect. Well, if you'd kept your CB350, you could have taken the machine, moved it 20 miles away, so instead of shipping ice cream 20 miles every day, we ship the ice cream maker. The ice cream maker, maybe it's you, works uh, Mondays and Fridays uh, at the parent store and Tuesdays and Thursdays at the satellite store. So we have consistency of the product. So don't ever give this up. And uh, you, know, you can look for two years for an Emory Thompson. If you find one on eBay and you say, oh, I finally found one, I'm gonna call them tomorrow, tonight when I get home. I guarantee you it's gone. Uh, they go in less than two hours, uh, all our models. So that little bit, Past us, uh, I'm going to put this together and show you how it runs. Um, everything on this machine is stainless steel, uh, except for the blades, and it's all designed to last a long time. And let me warn you, when you're doing a live demo like this, anything that can go wrong will go wrong. Jeff, what did you happen to drop on your foot one time? Uh, uh, <laughs> a 40-pound dasher on yeah. my toe. And, and, and to get back at me, he published pictures of his swollen toe, and he would reiterate that picture about every three months and, and put it up on Facebook, just so I'd remember. But the door just comes right off, and that's all uh, stainless steel that we have machined here. This machine is made in the USA, right at our factories here. With a snazzy uh, new logo in the front. Which one? The, the logo. Oh, the ET, sure. Um, so... That's, that's the door. There's a gasket on the door, and there's a bearing right here that comes out. Um, these, all, these all come out uh, removable uh, for cleaning. Can you see that okay? How often do you take the gasket out? Every day. It just pulls out, and then you put it back in. One little hint, don't lubricate where the gasket goes. It'll be like a slippery pig. Um, not that I know. I'm from New York. I've never seen a pig. Uh, but if I had, it would be slippery. Um, you just uh, put it in uh, back in there dry, and you don't need to lubricate it. About f the gaskets last about five years, and I think it costs twenty-three dollars. How are you? So it's not a killer. Uh, this is called the old-fashioned term for this is the dasher. This is like what's in the salt and ice machine. Same concept, except greatly upgraded. Um, our, even our old dashers, as they spun around, the idea is you're scraping the ice cream off the walls. And there we go, I'm dropping parts. As you, um, as you uh, spin it around and it's scraping off the walls, uh, our old ones were thrown out by centrifugal force, and so were these, the blades. You had to get up to a certain speed to throw them out. Well, that worked great until we started doing what we're going to do today, custard and gelatos and other heavier air content ice creams. So uh, my chief engineer and vice president, Slade Harmon, um, went and invented a spring-loaded system. So let me just take these springs off, and as you can see, good idea to have extra springs around. So here's just the basic dasher. Uh, people in the soft ice cream business call it the beater. Well, we call it the dasher. And you lubricate with a sanitary lubricant. Here's one called Sterachine that I use. 
and you just lubricate these O-rings in the shaft because the shaft is going to be running in a metal uh, sleeve in the back. So we're going to lubricate that daily, and at the end of the day, we'll wipe that off and then just wash it in the sink um, and let it air dry on the table. So we lubricate that. In a pinch, you can use Vaseline. Uh, this, is, this is glorified Vaseline. Uh, but it is a better product. It'll, it'll hold up better. So then I'm going to put it together, and that means one spring there, one spring there, and then the key to the machine in order for it to run properly is these blades have to go on properly. Uh, that's actually backwards. This is the way that's correct. How do I know? We drilled a little hole or dimple in the front of the blade so that when you are getting ready to put the door on, you want to see a dimple. I'll, I'll point that out. So I just put that on, and then I'm going to put on the other one. Now, mind you, I'm touching everything and I'm creating bacteria, uh, but we'll fix that. Here's the other one. There's the dimple. I'm going to put the dimple to the front. I'm going to double check it. Now I just squeeze them together a little bit when I put it in so I can get it into the machine. Slide it back in. I don't have to reach in with both hands. I just go like this, and then I rotate it so that I know that it's all the way in the back. Now, when I go to put this door on, another little hint, and, and if I'm making it sound complicated, it, it really is not. It's just stuff to know. You know, when you were 16, you learned how to change a tire, and uh, whoever taught you said, start loosening the nuts before you jack the car up. So that was just a little hint that you learned. If I took a tape measure and measured from here to here right now with the blades at 9 and 3, that distance would be greater than here to here uh, because the dasher sits down. And that means I've got to wiggle the door to get it on. But if I just turn this by hand until it's at 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock, the distance from here to here and here to here is exactly the same because the springs are holding it in position. So that's going to make it very easy to put the door on. These dashers are all the same on all the machines. Let me show you uh, the world's largest dasher. Uh, uh. This is a 44. That's the same concept. It's not easy to hold it like this. Uh, that's the same concept, just everything bigger. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just this one. All the others are uh, hinged. The doors are hinged, so they open uh, on the bigger ones. However, I still put it at 12 o'clock and, you know, like that, 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock. Really pretty easy. <laughs> really, this is this is just not. You know from from working in the store yesterday, it's nothing. <clears throat> no, but like changing a tire. If I show you how to do it now, you can say, "Oh, that's easy." And besides the two hundred nine videos that we've made, and we'll add six more today. Two hundred two hundred and nine how to do videos. That, that can keep you busy forever. Uh, we also have a, the help desk at our, at the front page of our website. It just says help desk. And you click on it and there'll be a video just like this of how to assemble the machine. Uh, there'll be other things that we found that you've done wrong, like um, one of the most common ones is, and, and I give out, I, I have people, I call people nights, weekends, holidays, <clears throat> because those are the times you're working. Uh, we're in here at 8 in the morning at the factory and we work till 3.30 in the afternoon, but you're not selling ice cream at 8 in the morning. So me and my staff are available uh, at extended times because what's a complex problem for you is really simple for us. You've got, you're making cherry Italian ice and it's eight o'clock Saturday night and the machine freezes up solid and you go, oh my gosh, what's wrong? What's wrong with the Emory Thompson? Well, uh, in that case, I asked the, uh, the person, it was Malik Rose, a famous uh, basketball player. I asked Malik, I said, taste the product. What's it taste like? So he goes over to the bucket and he tastes it. He says, oh, it tastes like cherry juice and water. I said, Malik, come on. You've been doing this for five years. You left the sugar out of the formula. All you're making is a giant ice cube. If you put sugar in it, now it becomes sorbet or Italian ice. 
So what was the solution? The solution was to throw the pro add, take the product out of the machine, add the sugar, and he was good to go. Uh, if there had been any other company, they would have said, oh, yeah, we're Taylor. We'll, we'll have someone. This is Saturday. We'll have someone over there Tuesday morning. The guy comes Tuesday morning. He looks at the machine. He's on commission. He changes a uh, $400 expansion valve and charges you $400 labor. You've got an $800 cost. He says, let's make cherry ice. He's watching you make the cherry ice. You're not going to leave the sugar out. He puts in, see, oh, what a hero. He fixed my machine. There was nothing wrong with that expansion valve. There's never anything wrong with this expansion valve. It was you left the sugar out. So we got you going at 8.01 on Saturday night. He got you going Tuesday afternoon. We think that counts for a lot. So we'll put this on. That just fits on like that. And then uh, years ago, people would ask me, why don't you have the cam action like Capertani? Why don't you have the cam action? Because as a non-engineer, I looked at it and I said, you know what? I don't think that thing's going to last. Well, guess what? One of the biggest parts is to sell on eBay is uh, parts for their cam action. It does not hold up. This, I mean, the only time you're going to see a cam action on a car tire is at an Indianapolis 500 race where they come in, they put on the tire. These guys were trained on the cross Bronx, which I used to take to work every day, because if you slow down to five miles an hour, they strip your car. Um, all cars have uh, five nuts on them to hold it in place because that holds the, the, uh, the wheel better than any cam action ever will. So that's what we do. So I just put all four on. And uh, now I'm going to tighten it. I just go two and two, opposite ends, and just hand tight. Let the, let the gasket do the, the work. Uh, one other trick you'll see me talk about before is there is a gate here that goes up and down. And the last thing you did between batches is you, uh, if you went from chocolate to vanilla, which would be a mistake, <coughs> you washed out the machine, the water came out, now you're pouring in the product, it's going all over the floor, you're looking to see if the door's on right, you're cursing me with unmentionable words, and what's wrong? You left the gate open. And we all do it. We all do it all the time. So that's all closed up, ready to go. Now I'm going to sanitize it. I have been touching everything. I want to kill the bacteria that might be in the machine. And so um, at the very worst, if you were on a desert island uh, and you had nothing but a batch freezer and you need to sanitize it, you could use a cup, uh, excuse me, a cap, not a cup, let me show you this, of Clorox bleach. Let's say this is a bottle of Clorox ble bleach. Clor Clorox is chlorine. Uh, that's, a, that's a cap. That's how much you put into a gallon of water, a cap full of Clorox bleach. Uh, I don't, you, know, you can do it in an emergency. It'll do a great job. I don't use it because health inspectors go, oh my gosh, you're putting in uh, chlorine, uh, Clorox into your machine. And when I was younger, I used to fight the good fight. I'd say, well, Pal, what do, you, what do you think I put in my swimming pool? Well, that didn't get me anywhere at all. You, you can't win with the health department. Anybody here from the health department? <laughs> oh, sorry, you're out. <laughs> um, so I use a commercial sanitizer that is, guess what? It's chlorine-based. And I use Sterachine. And I'm not uh, shilling anybody's product here. Nobody pays me to do this. What I try to give you is good information that will make your life easier. Every health department in the world knows the name Sterachine. There may be other products out there just as good, AirX100 and, and some others, but if your health inspector goes, what's that? You, you've already gotten into trouble. They know what um, Sterachine is. So if you read and follow the directions, uh, it's really very want? simple. How hmm? much water do you want? Four quarts? I'll just take that, if you don't mind. No, that's what I made it for. Okay. So uh, you read and follow the directions, and it tells you how much to put in, and it's a powder. And you just stir it up, and you're going to pour it in the machine. And you know I use Clorox. <laughs> and you know that everybody just heard that on the mic, and it went out to a million people. It's like I Love Lucy. It's out there forever. We didn't hear it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you'll have to watch the tape. Okay, I'm going to pour this in. The quantity, see, I'm sloppy. The quantity that you uh, put in does not matter. Uh, but I'm going to try to get it at least half full. 
because when we turn the machine on, it's going to slosh it all around, and it's going to hit every contact surface. Um, in reality, um, the second that hits the stainless steel and I turn the machine on, everything is sanitized. Bacteria is killed. Uh, however, uh, the health department runs it run for 30 seconds, minute, minute and a half, two minutes, depends on your person. So with the infinite overrun, which we'll get into later, I'm going to hit homemade, that's my highest speed, and I'm going to start it. No refrigeration. So now that's all sanitized. And according to the health department, I'm going to wait a minute and let it go. Uh, when we pull ice cream today out of any of the machines, you're going to see us turn off the refrigeration switch. We don't want it to get any colder. And then uh, we're going to open the gate. And the design of the dasher is going to push all the ice cream out. However, uh, we, uh, ice cream is thick, so it flows out very fast and nice. Uh, this is just water. It's really thin. So if I open this gate now, uh, me and the whole front row, it's going to be like Shamu the whale. You're going to get, you know, soaked <laughs> with water. So if I open this now, mess everywhere. So turn it off and drain it out. The barrel is slightly pitched forward. Whoops. The barrel has a slight pitch forward, so all the water will drain out. Um, and then what I want to do is I'm going to keep this uh, in another bucket. Let me get another bucket. By the way, this machine is over 10 years old. I'm going to keep this aside because I'm going to keep it right down here because now anything that's going to come in contact with the ice cream, a spatula, I can just put it in there. It's sanitized. In the real world, you don't wear gloves, but you know what? I'm going to be throwing in some cookie pieces, so I'm just going to put some of this on my hands. I'm cleaner than I was. Um, if Sammy comes in and I pick her up, which I will, all 70 pounds of her, I'll go rewash my hands and re-sanitize. But I've got all that done. Uh, I'm going to do one other little trick, and that is that gate moves up and down, and uh, it's got a gasket in there. And uh, rather than take that apart every single day, I'm going to take just a little schmear. That's a New York word. It means a little doppel. I'm going to take a schmear. Usually cream cheese. Cre usually cream cheese. I'm going to put a little schmear above the closed gate, and then when I open and close it, it's going to pick that up. That's just a little Where trick. Where would you put it on this machine? You don't have to. Well, where would you put it? I wouldn't, because you don't have to. It's a metal-to-metal -metal contact. There is no gate. We grind that in. Uh, so anyway, this machine is now sanitized. And if I don't put my hands in there or take it apart, it's sanitized for the next 8 to 18 hours, as long as I want to keep running. If I take an hour lunch break, uh, I'm not a very good businessman. But if I did take an hour lunch break, I would re-sanitize. If I'm going to take a lunch break for you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, I don't have to re-sanitize. It's so cold in there, no bacteria is going to build up. I'm also going to take my little lid and just dip it in there, and that's going to take care of it. Now we're going to make uh, the product. Let me go uh, get the ice cream blend while Jeff talks to you or uh, shows some Any magic tricks. about assembling this... Uh Rocket ship? Right here. In the channel that it travels up and down. In. Uh, remember yesterday we had uh, it, right, it got froze a little, little up in there. This is really uh, overdone on the, uh, the explanation. I know he makes the machine, but as you saw yesterday, those of you in the class, this is a piece of cake, and that was the 24 quart, which is a little more sophisticated, maybe, but very simple. It's. It took. How long did it take you to learn how to do it? A couple of minutes. A couple of minutes. That's it. And and if he could do it. <laughs> you know, it's funny you say that. He, if he can do it, one of the comments I get from people, and and I've, to use a modern term, I've embraced it. Which that what that means is you know I don't get pissed off hearing it anymore. Um, people actually call up and they say, "Wow, I watched about ten hours of your videos, and I figure if that idiot Steve Thompson can do that, imagine what I could do." 
and that's what we want, or at least that's what I want. I want you to see that this is so simple that you could do it. Um, Steve? Yes? How long does the blades last then? What are they running on? The scraper <laughs> blades last about six years. Uh, our old machines, uh, they lasted about uh, four and a half to five years. Um, and that's with no maintenance at all. Uh, the old blades, I think I can show you one, they had to be sharpened once a year. Uh, here we go. That's the old style, a stainless steel frame and a plastic insert. And every <laughs> year you had to re send the inserts back in to be remilled uh, and they would wear down, everything wears, and they would wear down to after three sharpenings or about five, six years, uh, you'd have to replace them. And they weren't, they weren't spring-loaded either. And they weren't spring-loaded, so they, could, they couldn't do the lower speed products. As soon as the machine came on, these threw against the wall and then swung around. Uh, with the spring-loaded blades, uh, if the blade is one day old or five years old, it's going to work exactly the same, which is really nice. It takes a lot of burden off of you. So, yeah. Jeff, would you mind measuring out for me four quarts of mix? Not a chance. Okay. I'm, I'm just, uh, <laughs> I want to put my phone on vibrate so I'm not the one that you look at. What did you want? Four quarts of mix. Okay. Please. This is a six quart machine. It actually makes more than six quarts, but uh, for uh, uh, the literature and advertising purposes, we say it makes six. I know it can make a little bit more. It really depends on the air content that you're going to run. And we're going to run the lowest possible. Um, and I'm going to watch it like a hawk because we are running so slow, I don't want it to uh, freeze. But uh, it's, a, it's a simple process. The problem is I get talking, and uh, I have been known to freeze you? the machine up. You get talking? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> it's time for lunch. <laughs> yeah, right. I used to tell people that, you know, since timing is important on a batch freezer, you can go out and justify on your uh, you know, tax return a diamond-encrusted Rolex watch. I don't have one. Uh, that, that, I'm afraid, went out the window with Apple because all you need is an iPhone. You know, they're, they're great for timing, but any kind of stopwatch. Okay, here's the mix, and I'm going to pour about half of it into the machine, for starters. Um, the dairy on this particular mix puts a little bit of vanilla in, but we put a lot more in. They, they're not out to make a great vanilla, and Jeff and I are. So we're going to put in uh, four quarts of mix. How many people took Jeff's class and know how much, uh, how much vanilla am I going to put in? Four ounces of vanilla, an ounce per quart. Now I'm just going to turn it on here. Uh, I'm going to select the infinite overrun to frozen custard, the lowest speed there is. And I'm going to pour in the uh, egg yolk product. Yeah, it's uh, the first ingredient in here is egg yolk, but it's it's been pasteurized and it's been mixed with uh, sugar. Does it, come, does it come dry or liquid? No, it comes in that can right here. Uh, it, oh, the can the okay. the can comes to you unrefrigerated, but then you refrigerate it after you open. That's I Rice Company. It's that paste. Yeah. There's a chicken in there too. Yeah, <laughs> a chicken in every can. All right, I'm gonna pour some of this in. Because somebody, oh, look at the mess. How could you miss that? I know, <laughs> right sorry. There. Lift. Okay. Put this in here. Put the rest in here. Look, 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 look. Now let's turn on the refrigeration and start a timer. Uh, it's we're coming. What? Right. Top, the top, the spout. That looks like Mount Vesuvius. Okay, uh, start. Now we're gonna add the vanilla. I don't get paid enough money for this. Okay, and there we go. 
Sammy is, oh yeah, where's Sammy? She, she'll, she'll be back, she'll be here at noon. So that's, that's all there is to this. Um, it's, it's a really wow. simple process and, and wait till you taste it. Uh, it, it it's pretty no incredible. Real sugar in here? Oh, no. huh. I did this yesterday too when I was testing the formula. The rest of the mix. Now it's really gonna spit. You could do that, but I, uh, Jeff is all about cleanliness, I'm all about speed. Uh, if I start this process and get it freezing, I'm cutting away at my eight minutes or so. Uh, so I'm a little sloppy. Uh, but I don't do this for a living. A little sloppy. A little sloppy. Now, any questions so far about uh, how the machine runs or anything like that? Yes. Okay, I'm going to repeat your uh, question so that the uh, camera can hear it. Uh, what speed did I run this at? Uh, custard is a very, very low air content ice cream. So I have it down to the lowest speed that this machine goes. The numbers really don't matter because it only pertains to my machine. Uh, but uh, in, on the infinite overrun control here, we have 10 different products. Uh, and you can pick the one that you want and it'll go right to the speed that you want. But this is the lowest that we spin this machine and, and still make product. That's why uh, it makes a little air. Uh, give you an example. If I put mix in here, or heavy cream, let's say, heavy cream, and I stir it with a whisk, it's going to remain heavy cream because I can't stir fast enough. But if I take an electric mixer and put it in here, it's now going to become whipped cream because I'm spinning it so fast. So as far as air content, uh, the slower you run the machine, the less air it'll put in. So homemade, I'm running at 100% overrun. Uh, super premium, about 65% uh, overrun. Uh, gelato at about 45 to 50 is what the Italian machines are set at. Uh, the custard is down at 30. Uh, um, I have it at 35% overrun, which is 17.5% air content. People get confused. Is it air content or is it overrun? Overrun, if you're not familiar with it watching this video, uh, let's get rid of the word overrun and put in proof, as in proof and alcohol. If you've got uh, a jug of uh, 100 proof rum, uh, 100 proof means it's 50% alcohol and 50% other stuff. Um, if you had an 80 proof uh, rum, it would be 40% alcohol and 40% other stuff. About ice cream, we don't talk, we don't use the word proof, we substitute the word overrun. So 100 proof or 100% overrun is 50% dairy and 50% air. If you didn't have air in a product, uh, it would taste like lard. Uh, we put haagen and Ben and & Jerry into business. We also put people like Breyers and Bluebell. Uh, haagen and Ben and & Jerry are low overrun, not as low as this. And it's a very dense, rich ice cream. Bluebell, haagen uh, ha uh, Breyers are high air content two things happen. The higher air content is going to be a larger portion and you eat with your eyes. So you say, wow, look at all that ice cream I got. It also, when you eat it, like Jeff's ice cream, it leaves you feeling refreshed and saying, oh, I wish I, had, I could go for another one. Uh, haagen -Dazs is only sold in pints for a couple of reasons. One is it's so heavy. All their, ice, all their haagen -Dazs stores, for the most part, failed because they didn't take note of the fact that uh, a four ounce portion for five dollars was going to be so small it's like you know building a nuclear bomb the nuclear core is tiny it's going to be so dense that it's very small so your eyes say whoa gee i got gypped um, the other thing is it will sit like lead in your stomach if you ate a large portion of it if you sit down and eat a whole pint of haagen -Dazs, you're going to feel pretty full um, and uh, that's not what we want because people don't say oh, I feel full because that was a very dense ice cream. They say, oh, I feel full because Jeff's ice cream made me feel full. Therefore, Jeff's ice cream isn't to my liking. Well, that's not what he does. Um, so uh, when you buy haagen -Dazs, you're actually buying it in a pint, and you bring it home, and you take a couple of tastes before you throw it in the freezer. You have a little more at dinner time, a bigger portion. And then if you're like me, at 11 o'clock at night, you take another spoonful before you go to bed. It doesn't count. And so you pick at, at Haagen-Dazs, so you can eat these smaller portions. 
but in a large scoop portion, it, it's not going to sit well in your stomach. It's so heavy. So uh, overrun is dependent on what you're trying to sell to the product. If I'm trying to sell this frozen custard, I'm going very low because that's what frozen custard is supposed to be. So uh, it may not be something you're going to eat a giant sized portion of except here and you're not going to do it every single day. So uh, to say, just point blank, say I want no air in my ice cream uh, is, is kind of foolish. It, it, it would be, another way to look at it is you have a birthday cake and a pound cake. Uh, a birthday cake <laughs> is high overrun. A pound cake is low overrun. Uh, they're both cakes, they're both good. Which would you rather have a second piece of, the pound cake or the birthday cake? Chocolate uh, cake. Probably Jeff's birthday cake. So uh, that all becomes very important. I did just have a birthday, you know. Excuse me? I did just have a birthday. Congratulations. Thank you you. turned 90? No. Si 69, Christmas 69. Day. 69. Wow. Congratulations. Hey, no problem. <laughs> um, other questions? Yes. I'm sorry? Yes, uh, with our machines, you can do frozen custard in any flavor you want. Uh, frozen custard, the frozen custard machine was invented in 1923 by my grandfather. And we built them for many years. Uh, we stopped somewhere in the 60s making it. The market wasn't there. It came back in the 90s, and we built a lot of machines. And now the market has also softened again, so I don't do a lot of them. There are 40,000, I don't make any of them, uh, Stolting does, and they build a good one. It's based on our patents. Uh, so if you need a big $40,000 uh, custard machine, you go to Stolting. Uh, most people don't want that. They would like to feature the ice creams, the sorbets, the Italian ices, the dairy-free, and, and a vanilla custard. When you taste it, you're going to want this. This is the only machine in this compact size that's going to do it, except for uh, I think Stolting makes one for about twice the cost of this. Uh, but we're making uh, a, a very unique product here. But it's, it's, I don't believe in running a business on one product. It would be like Brooks Brothers only selling blue suits. Uh, what if I want a brown suit? What if I want a seersucker or a twill? I got to go somewhere else? Uh, I want them, I want the, at least the ability to make the product. So I'm just going to check it. We've been. Eight minutes, we'll see how we're doing. Okay, that's coming along. It's, uh, it's not ready yet, it's, it's soft. Now you pull close to that. Pretty much like Jeff, Jeff pulls at, pulls at this uh, thickness. Uh, so everybody, there is no right or wrong. Uh, everybody has different uh, ways of doing it. Well, there it. is a right and a wrong. Well, this is already frozen. I'm right, you're wrong. And I'm wrong, yes, I know. I'm just over here off Canon. We're getting some uh, containers. Superb. I'm sorry? Superb. Oh, thanks. Um, Why aren't you going to put it in here? I don't have a timer on my machines. Uh, and there's for a very good reason. Um, I don't want to mess it up. I want to pull it stuff. I'll keep that separate. Perfect. I know, it's perfect for you. You want what to throw in the freezer? Eat it later. With this, what do you do with this? Just throw it in the freezer. This whole thing? Yeah. No. Absolutely. No. Um, where was I? Don't put timers on machines because every product is different. If you have a timer that's going to say your vanilla is ready, that's great. But strawberry brings more sugar to the table. The more sugar, the longer the freezing time. This is a higher sugar content because of the stuff we put in, so it's going to take a little longer to freeze. Yes. How does this compare to what? Oh, you'll find it identical. You'll be amazed. And it's building up there, so it's going to be ready soon. Custard, vanilla custard. It's if I did this, if I did just this flavor every single day within one day, I'd be an expert at it. Uh, huh? The first time I made it with this base yeah, was yesterday. Was little... So I'm watching the machine like a hawk because. Uh, of the um, Bavarian base, the custard, I put in uh, one pint. So one pint and four quarts 
of mix. Take another quick look. The recipe's wrong? Here. Yeah, I switched machines at the last minute. Here, put this away. You put it in your pocket. No, I'm watching it. For what time. are you watching? The time. Why? I guess I don't need it anymore. All right. No, you can see when it's ready. So we're just waiting a couple more minutes. There'll be a question. Oh, you ought to take mm -hmm. it out. Yes. Can you say it louder? Yeah, we used to have nothing as sophisticated as this. We've had this now for coming up on four years, I guess, five years. We've only replaced two of them in thousands of machines in 171 countries. That's and those ready. two were because the guy uh, hit it with a, one guy hit it with a pastry tray, and the other guy, I don't remember what he hit it with, but he just smashed it. Let it get smashed soft. Up. Let it melt a little bit. Then you're eating good ice cream. This is, this is soft. This is within a couple of degrees of what it comes out of, a, out of the machine at. And uh, you can see it's got a nice uh, yellowish color to it from the egg yolks. And so come on up and try this. I think, uh, I think you'll be surprised. Jeff, who doesn't like AMI ice cream, was blown away. Spoons are over there. Am I doing okay? You You're doing great. Like no, I might as well watch you. You're doing fine. <laughs> Can I bring you a small taste? Oh, he's bringing us. He's he is. Okay. Yeah. okay. Is that for you and Kirsten? Oh, here she is. <laughs> Nobody gets sick. Big guy. He's a big guy. He's a big guy. Who's going to be the one? Uh, oh, just a little for me. <laughs> There's always one. Uh huh. Hmm? What are you taking? Two? Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> right, do, we believe, do we believe that? No. That was a small portion. Well, it's his second. <laughs> How's that? That's, look at this guy. He can eat that. What? <laughs> you gonna try some? Yes. Okay. Oh sure, it's for Jack. Yeah. Thank you. Kristen. Krista. 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 I know how good it is, and that's the trouble. I want a lot. Thank you. Well, I'm gonna grab a spoon. Charlie. That's a big spoonful. Is that Paula? Yeah. So what do you think? Best you ever had? Yeah. Could you add some vanilla bean to this? Give it a little yes. <laughs> Jeff looked at it this morning and said all it needs is vanilla bean. Okay. That's what we were just talking about. It needs a little, but it's good. It needs a pop. Mm -hmm. And since it's a low fat um, product, it doesn't leave that greasy mouth feel uh, on your palate the way a, a high, high fat uh, dairy product does. Does this have to be stored at a different temperature than ice cream? Or no. Same, same as ice cream. Absolutely Danny. same. Thank you, sir. Or you can keep it like I did overnight and not a freezing cold freezer so you're scooping it soft, yeah, yeah. which is the way custard is often done. It's fine. That's a 10%. Pretty unbelievable, isn't it? Same, same product Jeff uses at his store. Uh, dairy mix company out of St. Pete and Tampa. St. Pete. So what do you think? St. Pete. Thumbs up on this one? Good. You're milking them, right? I am milking yeah. them. I told you it would be good. You set the bar, not all the other ice cream companies. Oh, they will be because Jeff is a better ice cream maker than me. Don't tell him I said so. It goes to his head. Spoon. Yeah. 